Welcome to the Greatest Awakening of God, my friend, program number 54. Yahoo! We love you. We Today, my friend, we're going to pray before we start. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I ask you to bless the listeners, yes. bless those faithful people who are watching. Lord, may their life be touched. May they truly be filled of the Holy Ghost and love. Father, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, minister. Hello, minister. Aloha. Aloha. What you got to say today? Today is a powerful message from God. <laughs> oh, how powerful. So powerful. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Today's so message is on temptation. See, in these end times, we're going to be tempted a lot more because the world's becoming more defiled and it's becoming a more evil of a place because a lot of lusting, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people lying, cheating, stealing, robbing. So, be a lot of temptations. In James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy. James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temp temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see, when we're tempted, it works in us patience, because we have to be patient for God to give us the answer so we can work it out and to get us out of temptation, because... What good is it if we're here not to be tested? We're supposed to be tested. This is the test. In verse 13 of chapter 1, it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God doesn't tempt you. Maybe the God of the world, Satan or Lucifer does, the devil, but God doesn't tempt you. He's not, he doesn't make evil. He doesn't participate in evil. It's, it's not right. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So when you're motivated by your own lust, you'll be enticed and you will be tempted and you will fail. And what happens is, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So sin equals death. And then in verse 21, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, the word which is Jesus Christ, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Don't just hear the word and become an obese Christian. You gotta go out and do the word. So what you hear, you gotta practice it in your life, perfecting yourself and making you holy, for God is a holy God. He didn't call us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So therefore, we must be holy and blameless and spotless before Him. For if, any, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto man, beholding his natural face in a glass. So don't, don't be like a man looking in the mirror and saying, Hey, you're going to see your sins. You're just going to see everything you do wrong. When, especially when you see Jesus because He's so holy. You're going to see everything you do wrong before a holy God. And now even Jesus was tempted. He was tempted by the devil where He said, If thou be the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. If thou be the Son of God, jump off the cliff. For it is written, Angels shall bear you up before you dash your foot against a stone. But Jesus knew He should not test the Lord thy God. And He even prevailed over Satan because Satan was no match. And in 22, even the Pharisees tempted him. In verse 20 through 15, 22, 15, it says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. They're talking about Jesus. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the, the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? He called them hypocrites. Show me, show me the money, or the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image on the superscription? They said unto him, Caesar. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore 
unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. They thought they had him trapped. But he prevailed, and it was, you can't test God. God knows all things. So you see, as the elect of God, especially in these times where we're supposed to, where the itching of ears, the spirit of deceit, uh, the spirit of delusion is falling upon the churches, and people are church hopping a lot, we have to, we have to be on our toes, having the whole armor of God, as Ephesians 6 says, on top of us and ready to fight and battle the devil and stab him in his heart. Because that is the only way we will prevail, with the word of God and staying planted upon the foundation, which is Jesus, and clinging to the Lord and having a deeper relationship with ever. we got to get closer to Him than ever. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. See, we have to all forgive one another. Forgiveness isn't for the other person. It's for you. Because if you're going to hold on to that grudge, you're going to hold on to that unforgiveness, that's, that just spirit of unforgiveness. It's going to eat you up from the inside out. You're going to be always irritated with that person. You're going to spend so much time hating on that person when... If you just forgive them, it gives up all the burden. And it gives, it's not blocking you from getting closer to the creator of the universe, and closer to Jesus Christ. And it says in 14, And above all thing, all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Love is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God ruin your hearts, to, the which also you're, to which you are also called in one body, and be ye thankful. So we are all one body in Christ, and we have to be thankful and abide in love. Walk in love, talk in love, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Especially in these times, we need to get closer to the Lord. We need to walk in love, talk in love. And don't be tempted by the devil. Jesus overcame him. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Satan is the god of the world. So you can overcome Satan. It says we're supposed to we put, we put, the devil, put the devil under your heel. Say, Satan, don't talk to me. Ignore him. He's irritating. He has an irritating voice. Trying to tell you to do evil. You don't even want to do evil. Why? Where will it get you? You have anything to say, Minister? Keep going. You Keep going. Know. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> you see... In Colossians chapter 2, it says that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus Christ is all the treasures. You see this book? The Bible, the Holy Bible. If you dig really deep with your shovel, investigate, be an investigator of the word, seek, and you'll find treasures beyond your understanding. This is the basic instructions before leaving earth. How are you going to leave earth without the basic instructions? Don't do the additions, reading all that other books, the other garbage. First, get to know Jesus Christ, the true gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then you can move on to all those other things and get deeper into the word and get to know him deeper and have a more deeper, intimate relationship with Him. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with, with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. In Hebrews, it says, it is impossible to please the Father without faith. What kind of faith do you have? Do you put all of your faith, all of your money, all of your time? How much time do you give God? Now, how much time do you give Jesus? Now, if Jesus is your employer, how much, would you, how much do you give your employer? Do you just give him like you would give Jesus? He'd fire you, right? If you give him that half okole or half elemu perso personality and just moving, doing things half, you know? You got to do it all the way. You go all the way. That way you can stay, especially in these hard times, still be working. So don't go halfway for God. Go all the way. Stay steadfastness in the Word. Keep re renewing your mind with the gospel of Christ, with the Word. It's, it says, 
in Deuteronomy, may I hit that word in their heart that I may not sin against thee. Do you have anything else to say? You know, what's amazing is when you, when you have the power of God, it will follow you no matter where you go, my friend. The power is real, and it's not man-made power. Man-made power sucks. God's power <laughs> is unlimited. God's power is not of this world. It is. It scratches people's head when they start seeing the power move from God through you as a believer of the real Jesus Christ. Yes, there's many people who say they love Jesus, but it's only on their lips. The bottom line here is, it's either you got the real God or you got the phony God. It's either you're going to go to the lightning, the most beautiful light, bright light, which is God, the creator of the universe, the fathers of light into everlasting light, or you'll be going down into everlasting darkness with evil, death, no life, destruction, sucks and destructions and torment. It's either one or the other you will be in, and that is the guarantee. But the problem here is, I, as a minister, get, cannot choose for you. You have to choose your own. The Bible says, choose this day who you're going to serve. My friend, what is it to gain the whole world and get the famous title, president, whatever the title, and die and go to hell, and you cannot even take your title with you, your nice mansion, you can't even pull your air condition off your mansion to take it down in hell to cool you off. Even if you own the liquor store, you cannot even take the liquor store down there to cool you off because there's not enough liquor to keep you cool. So you're going to be uncool. You're going to be hot to trot, screaming down there, my friend. I'm telling you right now, God loves you so much, and he's going to come back. He's not coming back for one stupid building. You know, people go, oh, you know, church, 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 church. Look that church. Look this church. Look that church. Look that building. Oh, the pillar look nice. You saw the building. Huh? Go pillars, the temple of God, the church. My <laughs> friend, I don't care if it's 24 karat gold church, marble floors, stainless windows. Don't mean nothing to God, my friend. You are the living church of God. You you got to stop boring your neighbors. Stop boring your friends and your family members and tell them, Hey, you want to go to church? You want to go to church? I got a good church. I got a perfect church. Hey, that church ain't perfect. As soon as you walk in, you just unperfect the church. My friend, the only perfect church I know is not on earth. It's in heaven. <laughs> Trust me. There is no perfect church on earth. But we are the body. We are the true church, the living body of Christ where the Holy Ghost resides in you 24-7 until the homecoming of the raptures for God to pull you up. He's not coming back for one stupid termite building or a building where you got a big mortgage to pay that's not even paid off. Shame on you because you're so busy doing something else with the money. You know what, my friend? Let me tell you something. I'm not going to speak for the people, but let me tell you something. What makes God angry is you can send your money and write a check for the people who experience earthquakes worldwide. You can do that. But yet, you don't have the time to deal with your own kind on your own island who are starving, homeless, helpless. You, you just look the other way and you think by writing a check to go take care of a foreign entity a foreign country of people who love Satan because you don't really know their background serving the devil and here's your own brothers and sisters across the street dying in the pox being harassed by the cops homeless churches beautiful churches plenty room in the yard in the background of where the building is and you got padlocks and fences no trespassing alarm system and you rather have the mosquitoes Flying in your building, in your church, in the roaches, and yet the homeless people are dying right outside your church, and you're not doing nothing about it, and you can call yourself a Christian? You understand what I'm saying, my friend? How can you call yourself a Christian? And then when somebody is dying and starving of starvation, instead of you giving them something to eat, my friend, as a believer of the Lord, oh, brother, I'm sorry, I know you're hungry. Let me take you to eat. 
someplace delicious. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Not, oh, here, let me pass you on track. Oh, I'm going to eat this. What are you going to do? Eat the track? <laughs> My friend, you're a disgrace. A person who is starving and homeless, dying need to food. eat, got to go into the trash can. And here you. I need food. Here I need food. you. So huge. So big. So wide. Your icebox are loaded. When you open up the doors, the food start falling down. <laughs> you open up your shelf, loaded with canned goods. And your stomach not growling like the ones out there on the street starving. And yet you watch these commercials on TV. Why don't you give to the Red Cross? Why don't you just give to the Black Cross? My friend, because that cross just went turn black. Give to your own kind right across the street. God not gonna be pleased with you because you ain't sent a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars to a foreign country. It says you are worse off if you don't take care of your own, your own family. Who is your family? Those on this island. Hello. They're dying. They're starving. Feed them first. Clothe them first. Then send money out to the strangers over the seas, over our ocean. Send your money then. But they tell them, don't send it over there. And you got your own starving and dying across the street in your neighborhood. Shame on you. Hello, where's the common sense? You think God going to respect you? God going to love you because you're doing that? Negative. You're out. Jesus even clearly said, oh, for they're the father, they're, they belong to the father of the devil. Whose flock are you from? Are you the flock with Jesus of the living God? Or are you the flock of Satan? Think about it, my friend. I know it's a tough question, but you need to evaluate <laughs> what I'm saying. Because, my friend, it's either you're going to go to heaven or, or you gonna are going to go to hell. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to tickle your ears, itchy ears. <laughs> oh, I feel good, minister. Oh, I love the singing. My friend, I'm okay if you miss, miss, miss the greatest singer on planet Earth. Even the greatest singers go to hell screaming, too. They don't scream. Because no God don't look at the screen. Your, your beautiful sound voice that echoes the, the, the silence of the night, that blends in and touch the people. My friend, God looks at the heart, not the voice coming out of your Amen. heart. Amen. Lucifer could sing. Lucifer was the greatest <laughs> singer. Sing better Did than you. Did you know that? <laughs> and beautiful. On top of that, my friend, he was the cream of the crop. Then he became the cream of the crap. <laughs> You understand? It became crap. <laughs> cream of the crop, or cream you go on the cream of the crap side. Which side do you choose? My friend, the Bible says, choose this day who you're going to serve. You're going to serve devil daddy, or you're going to serve Abba Father? Choose, my friend. Choose. Choose. I'm telling you, God loves you so much, my friend. He want to embrace you, but see, you're making it hard for God to love you. Because you're a hard-headed person. You don't like being told. You like your own way. You like singing the song. And I did it my way. And it's hot down here. And you know what? He's screaming in hell with that song. If you did it your way, you're going to be screaming on the way to hell. But if you did it God's way, my friend, it's going to irritate you. It's going to make you mad. It's going to make you frustrated. Oh, I can't take this. Oh, the stress. Oh, the pressure. Oh, since I follow the real Jesus, my friend, all hell breaking loose. Huh? I'm getting poked by the pitfall every day. <laughs> oh, my friend, I'm broke. All the money I had, I gave it all away. That's good. I gave to the poor. That's good. I visited the homeless. That's good. I went to prison. That's good. To visit them. Huh? And I was by <laughs> myself. My friend, because I was preaching the gospel, they locked me up. They told me to shut up. They told me to shove my Bible. They even smashed my head with it. They throw it at me. They denied me. They starved me. They didn't even deny my hearing in court. My friend, I'm just so in love with this Jesus. And yet, the world treats me like dirt. That's the truth, though, huh? They give me the finger. Instead of go to heaven, they give me the number one, the wrong one. Yeah. The next one over. And I thought they was Christians. I go to church with them before... Oh, hi, I love you. Hi, I love you, my brother. And then when you don't go to the church no more, when they see you in the mall, or they see you in the store, they're like this. <laughs> like you don't even exist. They don't know you. They don't call you no more. Whatever happened to the phone call? Hello? Remember me? 
I love you. On your oh, lips. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. What a lovely day. And then suddenly, pff, flat tire. No more calls. No more nothing. And in the store, they think they're good. They're God's gift. Yeah, and to the pastor, the one the flock was sitting inside. And now, God, when he elevate that person who loved Jesus, to put him on television, the pastor's nose in the air too. What? You think you're better now because God's using me on television? Why? Because you're preaching down a watered-down gospel where everybody go back into their sins? Huh? You think you're great? You think you're wonderful? You're nothing. Without God, you're nothing. And without love, you're nothing. So you know what? You don't have to be a nun and be nothing. Come out from there and be something. My friend, it's time that you walk the talk, talk the talk. It's not how high you jump in church on Sunday with ants in a pants. It's how straight you walk on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I love you, Lord. My friend, how loud are you talking of Jesus? Are you ashamed of him? Well, guess what? When you stand before Jesus and the Father, the Father is going to say, I never know you. It's time that you stop being ashamed. It's time you stop being an undercover Christian and become full cover. If you're undercover, underneath the cover, time to get out of the cover. Because God is love, my friend. It's sad. But the Bible clearly says, my friend, in the last days, the falling away of the church members, People used to be in love with Jesus, now love themselves. They're hugging themselves. Oh, they be singing to themselves. And I did it my way. Myself. You were so wonderful. You had it all the time. <laughs> I don't listen to no one because I'm the boss. So don't you tell me anymore what to do. Because I did it my way. You're a flat tire. God no can use you. Go back into your corners. But I'm telling you right now, my friend, if you're really tired of the devil, if you're sick and tired of living lies, it's time that you awaken. It's time that you stand on your two feet. It's time that you dive into the living word of God. Why do I call it a living word, my friend? I can guarantee you this. Jesus of Nazareth, the only one on planet Earth, has escaped death. The Bible says, oh, death, death, where, where is thy sting? sting? <laughs> Guess what, grave? Yeah, out. When Jesus resurrected, my friend, did you know Jesus destroyed all the graveyards? You don't believe me. Go check out Matthew. Matthew clearly says, and when Jesus was on the cross, when he yelled out his voice, and gave up the ghost. The Bible says the graves open up. And many loved ones who was dead. Resurrected. Came out of the graveyard. And went to people's homes. Their family's home. And started to knock the doors. And the loved ones who saw them knocking. And opened the door. Was probably having a heart attack. And holding their hearts. Because many. I'm talking over 500. Came out of the grave. The graveyard went out of business that day. I'm telling you. It's going to happen again. My friend, the rapture is going to happen. It's going to happen for, to those that are totally so loved for Jesus. It's going to be totally those that are in love with Jesus. That's going to be for those who totally embrace the Lord. Not only on Sunday, 24-7. Longing, desiring to please the Master. I know the Master, my friend. Do you? Who is your Master? Are you the master? If you're the master, you're in big trouble. Master of the toilet. <laughs> the toilet seat going up and down. That's the only thing on way to you. <laughs> you know what I mean, my friend? God loves you, my friend. You know, if you're, you're one of those that was being used in church, been stepped on, spit on, you know, the pastor looked down at you like he's more holier than you because he dressed more nice than you, he wear more white than you, he knows the scriptures better than you. He has a bigger Bible than you do. He don't call you. He only calls he, he has his own cliques inside church. He calls his own. And you know what? Shame on them for mistreating you, sheep. I don't blame you. Jump the fence, sheep. 
Don't die inside your fence with all Find this. Find greener grass first. Yeah, get the greener grass. My side get plenty of grass. Extra. Extra crispy too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Crispy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Extra crispy grass. My friend, my grass is tasty. You know why? It keeps you going. You see, when you get the real living God, when you get the true word of God, my friend, the more you hear, the more you want. It just gets you closer to Jesus. And you start saying, oh, Lord, I love you. I want you, Jesus. I'll do it for you, Lord. What would you want me to do for you, Jesus? It's no longer my way, my space, my only way. Come on. It's either going to be God or, or the devil. God loves you, my friend. At the Greatest Awakening, we love you. We have a program here that we just want to touch your heart. We want to be part of you. We want to be family. We want all of us to be family. God never said go and make churches. He said go and build family. My friend, we truly love you. No cost. We're not begging for your checks. God loves you. No money. Aloha. Awiho. Malamapono. Thank you.